Why are stars star-shaped? Minute physics? That one? When you ask someone to draw a star, they'll probably draw something like this. Ah! Why are, like, not actual stars? I get it. Okay. We're not asking, like, why is an aspen an aspen? You can tell that it's an aspen tree because of the way it is. Or this, or this. Even ignoring the rainbows. Nah, middle one is the Jesus star. Middle, like, this is the one that showed where Jesus was. This one is just a regular star. This middle one, that's the one that was floating above, like, the manger, where the, the wise men, like, that's the one that they found. This one, now we're getting into, like, this is, like, an actual religious or mystical symbol or something like that. This is the only, like, definitive star. This doesn't seem very scientific, since we know stars are actually big hot I've got a theory it's got to do with uh optics it's like flares when you look at bright things through some glass they go like that round balls of plasma and far enough away that they're basically just dots so why do we draw stars that have points uh, I'm trying to think how else would you draw a star <laughs> It would just be a dot. I mean, they can be dots. You can absolutely draw stars as dots. The answer is surprisingly simple. We see stars as pointy. Look carefully next time you're outside on a dark night. Wait, really? So like it happens in your own eyeball? Wait, the points come out even with your own eyeballs? Not if you're just like, not just through a lens? Or just look at this dot. Maybe the guy who designed it had a, a stigma, a stigma, a blah, blah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, I thought usually that only happens through glass. It works best if you make the video full screen, close one eye, and relax the other as if you're looking at something far away. You should see a pointy star-like shape. Well, it is now when you make it pointy. In fact, it's not just humans that see pointy stars. Some telescopes see them that way, too. Yeah, This right. is all because light is a wave. When light from a distant source passes through- Light's just a wave, man. <laughs> It's just right in the ocean of vibes. Life's just a wave, and all you gotta do is ride it. <laughs> Through an opening or around an object, its waves are bounced or bent slightly and interfere with each other, so the passing light picks up an imprint of that opening or object. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> a straight line, whether it's a slit letting light through or a rod blocking the light, leaves its imprint by spreading the light out into a perpendicular series of dashes, like what you see when you squint. A cross creates... <laughs> mm, I'm seeing the same thing, but less. <laughs> Two crossed sets of dashes. Circles cause concentric rings. Squares spawn a kind of dashed four-pointed star. Hexagons dashed six-pointed... Hold on. All right, but this doesn't explain the star shape. The five-pointed star. Stars. And the famous double slit experiment gives a series of dashed dashes. My favorite diffraction pattern, though, is probably that of the Penrose type. <laughs> yeah, that's my favorite diffraction as well. That's a gnarly looking diffraction. As far as diffractions go on the tier list of diffractions, I mean, if that's not getting S tier, like, who are we kidding? <laughs> it's simply gorgeous. Gorgeous. Not that you see Penrose tiling shaped openings very often, but yeah. the point of all these imprints. Hold on, let's try again. One eye and one eye shut and then blur the other one. I don't know, dog. It just kind of goes blurry. Isn't that what he said to do? It just turns into a blurry dot. Is that they're the result of a point of light being spread out when viewed through a particular opening or past a particular object. Are you saying my eye is a hexagon? For example, the Hubble Space Telescope has four struts that support its small secondary mirror. Yeah, and okay. their imprint That's... causes the four-pointed stars. That's what I was saying! It's like an optical thing! It's got to do with the, 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 with the, with the optical thing that's, that's doing it! In Hubble photos. And I bet you can guess the shape of the aperture in the lens that took this picture. Similarly, the lenses of our eyes have subtle structural imperfections called suture lines, where the fibers that make up the lens meet. These oh. imperfections leave a very particular imprint on light as it passes by, as okay. researchers have confirmed by shining lasers in people's eyes. Down scientists? Always pointing lasers in people's eyes. <laughs> so we draw them because we've got squiggles in our eyeballs. We draw them as st we draw stars as pointy objects because we have squigglies in our eyeballs. So even though stars themselves are just tiny round dots, by the time the light reaches our retinas, it's been smeared out into a star-like shape. 
Every single eye on Earth will see a slightly different star-like smear, depending on the ah. exact nature of its suture lines. Even your own left and right eyes will differ. What's weird, though, is that any particular eye sees the same star shape for every star. It doesn't seem that weird. It's just like a point of light, right? Like, it's, just, it's a point of light, same eye. So while it's actually scientifically acceptable to draw stars like this, if you draw more than one in a single picture, you- Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dum dum alert. <laughs> That's uh uh. Uh, what, your stars are, are twisting around different number of points? Have you even looked at the night sky? So overlap your stars, don't twist them, draw them on top of each other and blur them to various degrees and we have scientifically accurate stars. Better make sure they're all the same shape. On top huh. of that, since diffraction spreads out longer wavelength red light more than bluer light, the arms of these star shapes are actually mini rainbows, with red on the outside and blue towards the middle. You've told me how not to draw stars, but that's a little bit different than telling me why we draw stars. Sure, I'll answer it. Yeah, we draw them pointy because maybe, technically, I think, if you look up, apparently, into the sky, you see the stars as pointy. But why do we draw them different shapes and twisted and stuff? Is because it looks cooler. That's the minute physics. Which again, you can see in Hubble photographs or- Although rainbow stars, I mean, why aren't we doing if that? you look even more carefully at a single point of light. So as crazy as it sounds, coloring in stars with rainbows is super scientifically accurate. Oh yeah. As long as the colors go the right way. <laughs> Don't get them mixed up. Uh-huh. Minute physics? I'll allow it. It was three minutes, but. 